When I was just a wee lad, I was asked by my teachers what I wanted to be when I grew up. I'd say I wanted to run my very own Jurassic Park, featuring real-life dinosaurs that would of course be genetically cloned just like in the movie, but of course without all the deaths. Unfortunately that never happened, the non-avian dinosaurs that we all knew from pop culture went extinct 65 million years ago, but the avian dinosaurs that survived are still with us today. If I told you we could bring back the dinosaurs we all know and love back to life, you'd probably call me crazy, and you'd be correct in doing so. But in reality, scientists have already been experimenting with ways to bring the dinosaurs that have become such a prominent part of pop culture back to life. Millions of years ago, birds and reptiles had similar development pathways that gave them snouts, but over time, molecular changes led to the development of beaks in modern day birds, and inside them all contain the evolutionary genes that originated within their distant predatory ancestors, like the Tyrannosaurus and the Velociraptor. The research comes from the one and only Jack Horner, the paleontologist awarded for discovering the Mayasaura and working behind the scenes as a technical advisor in the Jurassic Park movies. Thanks to him, the dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise behave much more bird-like than lizard-like, which is what the majority of people believed they were like at the time. Well, in 2009, he wrote a book on how to build a dinosaur, which goes over the theoretical process of de-evolving a bird to make it resemble the physical attributes of its prehistoric relatives. And the bird they chose is the chicken. The chicken may already be a dinosaur, but the main issue with it is, it's just not cool enough. They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. So the scientists are hard at work trying to make it look cool and scary. Horner states that the Chickenosaurus would provide proof of ancestral evolution of birds from dinosaurs, and he states, we're going to make a dino chicken without adding anything to the chicken. There are four major steps that need to be taken in order to de-evolve the chicken. Firstly, giving it teeth, then a tail, and then to change its wings into arms and hands. And they can do this using atavism activation. Biologists have managed to isolate the genes that are responsible for the development of facial features on birds during the embryonic process. By suppressing the proteins that would have led to the chickens having beaks, the scientists have ensured that the embryos growing in the eggs would have a dinosaur-like snout and palate. The resulting embryos look very much like the Velociraptor, one of the most vicious and intelligent dinosaurs ever evolved. In 2006, Matthew Harris of the University of Wisconsin noticed that the beak of a mutant chicken embryo he was examining had fallen off, and what was inside was pretty shocking. He had been able to stimulate the gene responsible for growing teeth, and the end result left the chicken with, you guessed it, teeth. Specifically, alligator-like teeth, part of the chicken's common ancestry. But that's not all. Researchers have been able to alter the genes of the chicken embryo so its feet are developed much more like a tyrannosaur. In modern birds, the back toe called the hallux is used for perching on trees or catching prey, but prehistoric theropods did not have this trait. But by using atavism activation, they were able to prevent the development from happening, leaving the foot in its prehistoric state. Scientists right now are also attempting to prevent genes from activating that shrink the tail during the embryonic process, because as the bird is developing, you can actually see it has a reasonably long tail, like a dinosaur. They're also attempting to give the chicken claws, like what's seen on raptors or the Archaeopteryx. Because again, as embryos, they actually have hands, but their fingers fuse together before they hatch. According to Horner, were about 50% there to creating a living, breathing dinosaur as they would have been all those years ago. Scientists expect to have a completed Chickenosaurus running around catching prey within the next 15 to 20 years. But there's also the ethical issue. When does science go too far? Researchers have been faced with several issues regarding ethics, as they're currently not allowed to let the chicks hatch when for the most part, they'd be living a full, happy life. There are those that believe it's wrong to play God, and that there's just some things science doesn't need to touch. While on the other end, people believe we should be allowed to push our current understanding on evolution forward. Horner states, I don't think there should be limits on science, 
Someone asked me recently, where do you draw the line? What line? And why should we draw one? Should someone have drawn the line before they made the Chihuahua? I don't think so. He makes good points. People draw lines based on their personal beliefs. But what do you think? Should the scientists be given the green light to hatch the Chickenosaurus? Or do you think that's crazy? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and remember to hit that subscribe button. I've been your host Alistair, and residents, thank you for watching.